this conference will now be recorded. Yeah, my roles and responsibilities in my current project is to uh, look after the quality. Uh, here, uh, I am uh, uh, I am a scrum master also for my project. So I take care uh, of any uh, any hurdles. Uh, if I make sure that team is not facing any blocker uh, when they when they work on their given task. And uh, also, yeah, I'm not able to explain, sir. Yeah, whatever is coming in your mind. At least one question is coming. One minute need to tell. Yeah, okay. I make sure that uh, team, uh, the, the work distribution among the team uh, and uh, I also make sure that uh, team is not facing any blocker blocker uh, when it comes to working on their given task. And uh, I'm responsible to send uh, everyday report to management. I'm, I'm also uh, responsible to like deliver uh, the deliver the uh, sprint items on time the basically the delivery is what i'm taking care of and when it comes to uh, automated testing i am contributing to it by creating scripts uh, for the automation i am maintaining the framework uh, which is already created and i am enhancing the framework okay working okay, towards fine. enhancing the framework Okay, so it is fine. Uh, since you are in maybe test lead or some rules, so that is fine. And who are in less experience, how you can tell anyone can tell? Sandeep, Sunil, Bhavani. Yeah, Prakash. Okay, yes, Sruti, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for giving this opportunity. Uh, as a tester, uh, I have worked as a manual tester and ETL tester as well. As a manual tester, uh, I used to design the test cases, the execution of test cases, and uh, uh, after designing the uh, demo, demos will be there. Uh, so I, I used to present the test cases to the business. Then we will get the reviews and update the test cases accordingly. Uh, then uh, first thing uh, before uh, doing the design we used to uh, go through the requirement and clarification sessions on that so that we used to present the uh, as a etl tester um, i used to design the scripts and execution of scripts so these are the different uh, roles i have performed in my um, testing career okay Okay, good. Who can take it next? Prakash, Rupesh here. Yeah, Rupesh. I'm an individual contributor to the, contributor to the team where I handling end-to-end -end ETL process, handling and interacting with their uh, clients with their requirements. And these are the four points. Okay. Four points in four seconds. You told me at least it should go. Like so yeah, easy. like it's like it's, uh, what and I'm saying is uh, yeah, like end to end detail process means where the source and source to target. I used to validate. Like okay. uh, I used to validate all layers of the data where it has been correctly la loaded and moving to the target where followed, and uh, the data accompl accomplished to the data validate. So the uh, uh, the part of mine, I used to validate count, duplicate, transformation, transformation rules, data integrity, data quality, check check along with the SCD one, SCD two, with their performance. Okay, who can go next? Sunil, Sandeep, Divani. Hello, this is Rishita. Yes, Rishita. Uh, yes. So currently I work in a product based company where we have bi-weekly release. So my responsibility is to create the test cases and test scripts, scripts and also assign uh, the particular task to the team that I have. And also a part of the escalation team wherein uh, to escalate all of the bugs and errors that we found and then continue with the uh, smoke and regression and all of those mistakes. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay. Aksha, can you tell uh, its higher experience so that can also observe and learn? Yes, roles and responsibilities, you can tell. So your sound is not coming. Maybe some issue. You can disconnect and reconnect again. Okay. Also, Kredi, can you tell? Hi, sir. This is Sunil. Okay. Hi, this is Sunil. In my in my previous company, I was a I was a my role my role was customer service associate, sir. And my responsibility is to without doing any errors and uh, and production, sir. As a customer service associate. Okay. And and when I when I am leaving the company, my my role was a senior senior customer service. Yeah, right now you are What's... doing this PL testing, database testing. So related to that only you have to tell. Okay, sir. Hello, Prakash. Hi, nice you can tell. Yeah, okay, you can tell. Yeah, my 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 roles and responsibility in ATM process, I, I need to validate the data sources. I need to validate the data which is given by the developer team. And I need to extract the data in my tool and apply some transformations and mapping techniques. And I need to find the bugs in that. And I need to again uh, fix that, uh, send that bug to the developer team to, uh, to recheck the error which is happening in the tool. And I need to clear that uh, bug. Uh, that's all. Okay. It is a extract, load, transform, and load the process. I need to. Okay. Hi, sir. This is Ganesh. Can I can I go ahead and tell, sir? Yes. Go ahead. Um. Um. As part of testing, uh, first we need uh, as part of my project, uh, we need to validate like. Uh, um uh, whether the uh, test cases are as per the um, as per the requirement uh, we need to validate like the test coverage whether we need to um, be whether we have written the uh, test cases as per the uh, all uh, brds and trd requirements we need to validate like the test coverage first okay um, all the requirements are uh, covered in the uh, given uh, test cases this is the first uh, responsibility and role and after that, um, uh, as part of execution, so we need to uh, validate. Like uh, I need to validate, like whether uh, whether any uh, road blockers are there in my uh, current testing. Okay, uh, to validate the uh, like uh, test data uh, is correct and um, it is uh, like uh, the code is pulling to um, downstream layers or not, and uh, counts and all uh, these things uh, in high level we need to validate um, uh, first. Uh, when we are getting the project and after that um, the uh, I mean the test cases count is uh, matching with the uh, given uh, hours for example um, if, if for every um, uh, organization there should be some rules and regulations uh, based on the billing hours uh, we need to uh, write the test cases count uh, so are the test cases count is matching with the given billable hours or not uh, this is the one more uh, um, responsibility and then um, uh, like um, uh, um, the bugs whichever we have raised uh, are um, are in correct state or not and whether it is uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, whether it is uh, raised in the correct uh, state or not like uh, the correct uh, development team and uh, uh, the functionalities and everything which is um, raised correctly or not these things also we need to validate and the raised defect, whichever we have raised, are um, are in the uh, tracker or not? Whether so for example, if we raise the um, four bugs, so all the four bugs are we have um, we, we need to track it in the, in the track it defect defect log. We need to log. We need to um, like um, 
we need to track the defects so that thing also we need to validate and um, daily we need to uh, send the status to correct status to uh, client if there are any uh, kind of any road blockers we need to uh, send an email to our business like these are the road blockers and uh, we are facing so this is the reason why uh, the project is getting late and these things also we need to um, uh, report high level uh, every day okay and um, every day status we need to send and after that everything is done the closer activities um, um, we need to uh, the closer activities we need to uh, follow perfectly like uh, defect logs and um, the test results uh, all the closer activities whatever are required based on the organization rules we need to follow that um, we need to close the um, uh, this uh, work request in respect to um, like um, for example we are using some gen track so uh, for tracking purposes, work request to tracking purpose. So we need to close all the activities in those, and we need to get the and we need to make sure that we need to get the um, closer emails from uh, acceptance emails from business. So all these things uh, we need to. Um, these these are my roles and responsibilities, sir, basically. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, but it went around two minutes. Don't tell that much time. As a summary, max one minute you can complete. And try such a way that from your roles responsibility only question will start one by one. In that way you can tell. So that it will be in your control. If you are giving all the control to interviewer, then any kind any question is coming in his mind, he will ask. So that it will go maybe in different way also. So that roles and responsibility is very, very important one question. Where you can specify your all strength area which you are expertise, which you are involving, so that the question will arise from there only. That is the initial point. So, okay, fine. Everybody uh, good way. So, you can tell some additional points like which tools you are using and how you are involving. Then, which database you are using, what type of activity you are doing in the database, what type of testing you are doing. So, few names you can tell that: smooth, sanity, functional, regression, retesting, all those. So that next your question will be what is functional testing? What is regression testing? What are the difference between smoke sanity? So you can mention that. Similarly, bug tracking tool or test management tool, what you are using? Bug tracking tool, suppose. So Jira or HPL and something. So that few questions uh, will come from that tool, what you have mentioned. Okay, then any meetings you are attending or not, daily basis, weekly basis, status, how you are sending. So that also few questions will come. So you can highlight all these points, five, six, or seven points, and in each point, one one line, one one line you can tell so that it will go with one minute. And next question will arise from all these points only. They will note down. In that process, you can follow so that it will be in your control. Always try to make it in your control. And whenever next question will come, try to tell that answer of that question and pinch one word or one line in that. So that next question will be that. So always try in that way. Some interviewer know that he is trying in this way, that is fine, but you can try in that way. So that the questions will not arise from their side. Always try to arise the question from your side. Always try to control from your side. Okay, so this is roles and responsibilities. Now they will jump to the technical things. Uh, Prakash, uh, can you tell the answer about it as, as per your experience? Yeah, that is only answer. Anything you can tell. Uh, I am working in uh, software testing with the ETL platform. I, I use the tools uh, Informatica Power Center and to end validation of ETL. We are doing and for extract transform and load using this tool with the different transformations. Then come to database. Basically, I am using with the Oracle database. Other database also using whenever target is coming. So all the queries are preparing in that and using the tools for connecting the database as SQL developer, DBA bar, or some other tools you can mention, which is familiar. Then the testing types, uh, I involved in different kinds of black box testing, smoke, sanity, regression, retesting, functional, non-functional, then exploratory testing, all those, wherever it is required. Preparing some documents, one heading you can give test document also. Preparing some testing related documents. One is test scenario, test cases, then bug tracking, defect tracking, then release notes or closure report. 
then any any requirement traceability matrix so these are the test documents going through and analyzing the requirements which are receiving from the client side or business analyst which which are mapping document or uh, we can say that uh, requirement specification document so all these points only you can tell tell five points and in each points one one line one one line you can mention so that the question will arise from there next one by one Okay, next we'll enter into the CTL data warehouse and business intelligence. So all these are correlated. CTL extract transform load data warehouse and business intelligence as a report. All these are correlated. So few questions we'll get from here. Okay, first one, what are the data warehouse characteristics, properties, or features? Anything. Some are asking characteristics, some are telling properties, some are telling features. So what are those? Can you explain? Oh, gosh, I can. Okay. Oh, there are four characteristics. The first one is subject oriented and integrated, time variant, and non volatile. Subject oriented, uh, it, it uh, categorizes the data based on the subject. Um, most of the projects are using the subject oriented. Uh, and then integrated, it combines all the data and keep it together. Uh, and the time variant is based on the timestamp, it categorizes the data. And then uh, comes the non volatile. Non volatile is a, a read only data. Once the data is loaded to DW, uh, to the way, data warehouse, it, can't, it, can be, it cannot be edited. It's only read only. It's uh, just read only data. So here we can't perform any insertion, deletion, and it is not editable. Okay. okay. Any other can tell any extra point or additional point? Om Siva Sudindra. Uh, sir, can okay. I tell? Yes. Yeah. Uh, data warehouse is it is a collection of historic data. Okay. It maintains historic data. Uh, like uh, for example, uh, it's a long. Uh, uh, the uh, data warehouse maintains uh, the data for few years. Like maybe five years, ten years, or twenty years. So characteristics includes uh, first it is a subject oriented means the uh, data is maintained product wise. Okay. For example, elect, uh, the data related to electronics item will be maintained separately. Uh, another characteristic is it is in, uh, integrated. Okay. Means whole data is maintained together. The third characteristic is it is time variant. Uh, means the data, uh, the time factor here comes in picture. Like uh, for example, last one year data can be extracted, or uh, monthly data can be extracted, or um, uh, quarterly data can be extracted, or weekend data can be extracted using data warehouse tables. And last one is non-volatile. Uh, this means that data is read-only. Uh, that is final data and no updation deletions are allowed in data warehouse data. OK. OK, it sounds good. So any question is coming. First, try to tell what is that definition, one line. Then why it is required. Second point you can mention. Then third, any categories available for that. If yes, then what are those? Explain one one line, then give some proper example, one one example from one one category. That's all. Just try to complete in one one minute. Okay, next is explain about ETL. Okay, this is a very simple one. Who can tell? Rishita? 
this is the uh, extract or transform and load process wherein first we get the data we use different conditions and we transform it to the uh, required one and then we load it to a different database or data warehouse or a uh, big data like that we, we get the data transform it and load it okay any tools are using for that or without tool also that, that can be done Yes, uh, we are, we use different tools and uh, we transform and we get the data like uh, informatica percentage and all of that. Okay. Without tool also it can be done. With tool also, if complexity is coming in that time only tool can be used. But for your, your purpose, you can tell we are using tool. One tool then you can be power center. Oh, okay. Describe different types of dimension. What is dimension? Why it is required? What are the different types? Give it some examples. Okay, Om, can you tell me? Uh, we have two, uh, yeah, Prakash, this is for me. Yes, we have yes, two dimension uh, dimension tables and fact tables so these are the two dimension tables we have so in the dimension table uh, we will maintain the static uh, static data and fact table we have uh, uh, the data which is calculated no that is table you are saying dimension table and fact table here table is not asking dimension what do you mean by dimension first what are the different types of dimension? Akash, can I do? Yeah, go ahead. Dimensions in uh, normal words so can be easily say as the events. Uh, uh, that the elements, uh, uh, fact is events. Uh, the events are not combined. All dimensions we can command as a fact table. Uh, without a dimension table, there is no fact table. Uh, dimension table in dimension table uh, somehow uh, we can having that uh, user locations user uh, some like that having okay, that much sorry elements okay. uh, called as a dimension table simply okay. Prakash can I try okay okay there are different uh, dimensional models that we have um like fact demon fact dimension hierarchy and level and the next one will be fact dimension tables uh next measures olap uh, schema metadata and then the dimension types and slowly changing dimension these are the different types that we have uh first uh, the fact is a, a key perform it's a fact is a key performance indicator uh, usually it will be the numerical value uh, which is to analyze the data or which is to analyze the business all the events are known as facts um, yeah and then the dimension it will be a parameter that is available in the fact uh, so dimensions um, dimensions are used to analyze the fact uh, without dimensions there will not be a meaning for the fact and then uh, and I'm uh, like what to say when it comes to um, and dimension it is a detailed information uh, that we will be having and then the hierarchy hierarchy is nothing but a structure and levels level is a um, level is a position in the hierarchy uh, yeah and then uh, we have uh, fact and dimension table uh, fact tables are summary tables built based on one or more dimension tables. Mostly fact tables contains the ID related columns, uh, which are key columns to get the data from the different tables. Um, and then the key, these key columns are not changeable. 
Yeah, and in a fact table, more than one key column will be there. Uh, usually, that will be again the numeric data. And then after comes the dimension table. In dimension table, we'll have one key column. Uh, and then after we'll have the different columns uh, data. The other columns data can be changed. Those are not fixed. And um, uh, the primary key in this dimension table will be a surrogate key in the fact table. Uh, and then we have this factless uh, fact table. Here only key columns will be there and not any data, uh, which will not have any measures. After comes the measures, it's a frequently changing columns. And the, the types of measures that we have here is additive, semi-additive, non-additive. Additive are the uh, things where if we add, we'll get a grand total. And uh, we can use the aggregate functions on this. Uh, aggregate uh, some function we can on, use on this. And then the semi-additive, which we can add the data, but the result will not be a meaningful one. And non-additive is we can't even add that because it will be both the combination. Like It, it doesn't matter. It, we can add that. And uh, OLEP. It's a multi-dimensional uh, data model. Uh, it uses on database tables like uh, fact and dimensions to enable multi-dimensional viewing and analysis. analysis. And then schema. It's a logical representation where we have three types here. First one is star, snowflake, and uh, galaxy, or the fact console, co constellation. First one, the star, will be one fact table and then connected to multiple dimension tables. Uh, and then after we have a snowflake. For snowflake, we have it is same like snowflake, but then uh, these dimension tables are having uh, will be connected to another dimensional table. The second level dimension tables are indirectly connected to the fact table. And the next okay. one. Yes, so here actually the question was for dimension only, but you converted that to dimensional modeling. So whatever you explain. Sir, can I try? Sir, uh, can you explain about dimensional modeling? Then all this history you have to explain. All these are coming under dimensional modeling. So dimensional model is different. Only dimension is different. And dimension table is different. So don't continue in that. So this question is only for dimension. So you cover dimension also, but dimensional modeling related a lot of things cover. So be specific in that. Dimensional model, dimension, dimension table. Three are different. Many are confusing, so don't confuse in that. Okay, any other can tell? What do you mean can by dimension? Yes, why it is required? What are the different types? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. This is Sandeep. Yes, okay, please. Sir. Okay, see actually dimension uh, is the property of the data after loading it to the database. So it, it tells us the uh, properties of the uh, data in that. So we have different types of dimensions here. So there are like chunk dimension, infrared something, and there are many more dimension types like this. So among these, uh, we often work on slowly changing dimension. That is the SCD type. So, and we also have different types into these like uh, type 0, type 1, type 2, uh, and uh, type 3 and type 6 types of slowly changing dimension. In this particular dimension, we will come to know about the data that is actually changing uh, with respect to time, but not completely, I mean, but not uh, regularly. It takes time to complete uh, like that. It takes time to change the properties of the data. and. Uh, these are the dimensions and not only about the slowly changing dimensions, we also have in different types of dimension, which gives the property of that particular data in different ways that we need. So for example, another type uh, is rapidly changing dimension. Here we can see the change in that loaded data very oftenly. I mean, the, the data will be changed very regularly. So by taking these properties, we can come to know that how the data warehouse, I mean, how the data in the data warehouse is actually working. Okay, okay, it sounds good. Any other can try? Om Sumya. Uh, can I try, sir? Yes, Swati. 
Yeah, basically the dimensions are the reference data where we have a detailed information about the uh, detailed information and it has uh, it has it is basically to use to analyze the analyze the facts and the different types of dimensions are like junk dimensions, confirmed dimensions, role playing, slowly changing dimensions. Those are different types of dimensions. Okay, okay, that's also fine. One minute is enough. Don't drag to uh, more time. Nobody will really take interest to listen on this story for three minutes. For this. Next one minute, 30 seconds to one minute, you can give the answer to one question. Sir, so uh, different type of uh, dimen uh, dimensions we can tell, no? all nine types? Uh, yes, all nine types not remembered also, four, five at least you are telling, that is fine. Okay. And one more line if you are explaining also, that is good. Okay, now where junk dimension is used? First of all, what is junk dimension, why it is used? You can tell me. It has the junk data. What is junk data? What do you mean by junk data? When we are combining two tables, it keeps all the combinations of them. The data which is which is not correct also, it keeps the data. Only two tables, not more than that. Uh, no, I mean to say, it, like if we are uh, when we are adding tables, it keeps the unwanted data as well, which doesn't make um, meaning. Okay. So, so junk dimension. Yeah. So junk dimension means it will collect only the data uh, which is junk. That means it is con uh, collecting containing the data in the random way. There is no particular particular dimension for that. So that okay. is what junk dimension is. Okay. Good. Uh, okay, next question is why SCD is used, not what is SCD, why it is used. Everybody telling whenever SCD question is coming, Prakash. what is SCD, what are the different Prakash. types? You can tell why SCD is required. Uh, Prakash, uh, I'm sorry for this. Uh, Prakash, after telling uh, answers uh, by all, all, the, all, the, all of them, uh, can you please tell your answer also because we wanted to make sure what is the correct answer. Okay, yeah, everybody telling correct only here and there minus plus it is coming. So all those together I can come from your side. That's why I only do it. So which are rectified or which are additional things already telling that. Now Soumya told one thing, junk dimension, that is good only. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, now next question is why SCD is used? Why it is required? Don't tell what is this and what are the different types. Somebody told why it is required. SCD. Sir, SCD is used to check out for which date we should assign the dimension attribute, which dimension attribute. Okay, one good point. Any other can add any more point? It is used to maintain the current data. Used to maintain? How oh, you should maintain data. Uh, historical data is coming up. Uh, the, the historical data can be removed and current data it is used to maintain. When we come, uh, uh, if the customer ID, he uses uh, that uh, account number after two months he uses another account number so for current uh, he using this number account number so for the current purposes it is using okay so previous will be removed current will be added you are telling that is SCD type one so normal why SCD is required no to maintain that down. SCD, uh, this SCD dimension that can change, uh, it is it is a slow process and it takes a time to change rather than changing on the regular basis. And this uh, implementation, uh, it's enable uh, users for the particular attribute 
uh, attribute or uh, giving the date over the time so example like uh, uh, customer or uh, um, maybe employee related uh, data that is uh, suppose one one employee get hired uh, in a long like three four years or five years so the data will be keep so we uh, that is an one example for for this scd okay okay very good this year so nice point okay so my own both good points you can note down others any additional points anybody can tell prakash shall i try yes yeah uh, in scd1 and scd2 are slowly change dimension in scd1 is used to keep current information in scd2 is used to track history of information suppose the customer has changed three location hyderabad bangalore chennai for example so all entries will be there in scd2 whereas in scd1 will have recent entry like chennai in the case of scd2 all entries will be stored okay so uh, as a summary you can tell why it is required you are explaining the types it can be type 1 type 2 type 3 don't bother about that as a common normal summary you can tell why it is required sir shall i try yes yeah uh, slowly change uh, scd means slowly changing dimension uh, it is used for uh, because uh, the, it is maintain the historical or present data as per the business requirement so it is not uh, required any uh, process to hire uh, for the uh, database maintaining it is uh, use all related information for the business uh, growing uh, for uh, future purpose okay yeah this is also a good point note down so again addition to that you can mention uh, timely you are telling and uh, previous so to compare the previous and current data it is used that is the main important thing current and previous how we will compare if any concept is there then only we can compare it can be 10 years old it can be 30 years old it can be 2 years old it can be the current one so wherever any comparison is coming for current and previous then fcd will come to the picture okay any other can add any more points swati so can we say like uh, for tracking the data yes tracking the data with timely basis comparing with old and new in the okay. okay any other can add okay uh, hello sir yes, uh, to yeah. analyze the data analyze the data uh, and to uh, work on the like to improvements uh, after studying that data by comparing it with uh, previous data yes this is also good point you can add why making this forum is many people are preparing in different way our notes then you are going through other notes then from online then searching from Google, YouTube. So many are coming with different, different answers. It is not like that I am correct, you are correct. So gather all these requirements, which are good note down, so that it will be helpful for everybody. Okay, now next is explain about measure. So what is measure? Why it is required? What are the various types with proper example? Systematic way you can tell, so that interviewer also, they can impress by hearing your answer. Okay, who can take this? Measures are like the changeable part over the period of time. And the different types of measures are like additive measures, non-additive measures, and semi-additive measures. Additive measures where we can add across all the dimensions and, and get a meaningful result. And non-additive are like where we can't add and and the result would be a meaningless. And non-additive is like where we can add, but there is no meaningful result okay okay good if you will add one one example with some table name then that will again it will be nice okay like if you take a sales example of some product product sales that would be an example for an additive measure okay 
over the period of time the sales might increase yes and uh, we can get uh, like we can take the data uh, uh, based on the date or the different columns available for that product yes okay so that is about measure next is explain etl related defects you identified this is very very important question and many are failing in that okay so what you can tell who can pick this whenever you are started doing testing you are into etl testing so what type of defects you are getting what type of defects you are raising some major defects you can tell five seven which you 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 means raised recently or in your career Uh, uh, we used to uh, uh, we used to get the defects uh, like uh, with the date conversion. The source date is different. Uh, the target date is different. Then we used to get the error. So that is the one thing. And for null handling also, uh, if uh, how it some uh, source only date will be coming to target. So it should not. Differ. Temps. Temps will come. How it will differ? Sir, can I try? Yeah. Okay. Next, who is trying? Nehal. So, can I try for this? Yes. Suppose if in a, a business requirement document, if they asked us for a full load and in the target, it's a delta load, then that's a defect which can raise. Yes, that can be one defect. Good. Next. Sir, this is Ganesh, sir. I'll try. Yes, you can tell. Here they can capture whether you work or not work. In one question, you are captured, which you have totally not worked in India. So very consciously you can tell what type of defect yes, you will get yourself. That one is good. Sir, basically we raise two, two kind of defects, sir. One thing is functional defect and one thing is configuration defects. Um, uh, if there is any failures in um, um, our ETL uh, like a uh, workflows, so uh, we, we, we do raise like a uh, uh, configuration defect. Um, and if there is any functional of, or defect, like any uh, transformation logic is not happening, so we'll raise the functional defects. And basically, uh, recently I've raised uh, there is um, a one uh, column, it, uh, there is one column itself missing in the file, uh, in, the, in the output file. So, this kind of defects we raise uh, functional defects. If there is any failure in um, um, workflows, so we raise a um, configuration defect. Okay. So, this is also a good point you can add. Any other can tell? Any additional point? Any other kind of defect? Duplicate rows. Continuously, are... you have to tell five, seven defects. So otherwise, you will be captured. Because defects is your main core part of test. Uh, sir, can we say duplicate uh, entries are uh, going into target table? Duplicate data. Yes, yes. So whenever duplicate uh, records are going into target table, in that case also we can raise that as a defect. That is one. Data. Data mismatch between the source and target, and column name, incorrect column name. Okay, column name is not same. That can be also defect. Any other? Ordinal position column names. Ordinal if ordinal position also incorrect, then it might be. Uh, then null, not null. So all this as a structure validation, we, we can uh, a, the, those should be correct. Otherwise, it it would be a defect. Yes, that can be defect. Any other can add? Not Data is not low. Hundred types are there. Anything you can tell. Time taken to complete the transaction. Yes, that can be one defect. Any other? Whatever you understand in all the concepts. You can think something is not working means that is a defect. 
thing can tell uh performance related issues uh, like it is uh, taking lot of time to load lot time uh, more than estimated time okay that can be also one defect next Sumya Om Ibrahim Siva Sumya 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 if you use something integer or character in some like MS SQL, MS SQL server and when converting to Oracle, we can use long or anything which is, is there as, uh, if it is not accepting the inter character more than the specified thing, we can use long. Okay, yes, that also you can tell one type of defect. Next, you can tell Tejasvi, Sai Sankar, Manila, Siva. Sumya Swati, can you tell another two three defects? Misconfiguration of databases. Misconfiguration of database will be not appropriate because your DBA people are configuring or if you are getting all the details user ID password SID all those and uh, you are not able to configure them that is your fault or they are giving wrong information there that is not coming into proper defects that you can we should not take a detail oh, okay sir. thanks Yes, data criticality. Okay, take the criticality. That is the defect type. Based on the criticality, you can assign means uh, severity, priority one or two or three or four or those. That is type. Uh, actually, Prakash, what we do uh, that is a uh, we we will call it as a data criticality validations. So in that uh, um, we have some. Uh, um, if, uh, for example, loan loan number ha should not be null. So, but if it is, uh, we will keep it as null, and uh, uh, we we used to check whether mail is triggering or not. And uh, by doing that, uh, the reports will be generated. In that generator reports also, it should be correct. Like uh, this is a this is a defect. That is why this report has generated. So that we used to validate. I mean, okay, so, so, so report has to be Yes, yeah. so this is also a good example of it. Only criticality, you will tell them they cannot understand. You have to mention that properly as well because you are using in your project, nobody knows that. You know that. Okay. Uh, sir, so related to masking. Yes, masking also one defect. Masking uh, because uh, all the data cannot be seen, should not be seen by everybody in the team. So, for example, Aadhaar mm -hmm. number. So, that should be masked. Yes, that is also good defect. And so for few for few projects like data sorting also uh, one defect. Uh, they'll mention like the data should be in a text uh, sorting order uh, kind of thing. So if if, if it is not uh, in that uh, given uh, sorting order, we can raise the defect. Yes, that all that also one good defect. Okay, you are and uh, data range. Yes, sir. I am uh, able to connect now. Okay. Can you tell any defect? Two, three defects. Pardon, sir. In ETL testing, what type of defect you found recently? If that question will come, then what you will tell? Two, three defects. Can you tell? Anything is mismatching that is a defect. So just pick something and tell. 
okay so if you can be ready with this question around 10 defects continuously you can tell don't stop in middle stop thinking telling then it will be out you have not worked because somebody is uh, working in atl testing daily basis for two three four five defects they are raising and in one year or four year means some thousands of but hundreds of defects you already raised so it should not stop in middle immediately continuously need to tell around 10 you can prepare Okay. Sir, my, minus, uh, sir, uh, sir, uh, one more minus uh, query on uh, source and target table is not giving zero, so that can be one. Okay. That also can be one defect. Data conflict in source and target data mismatching. If nothing is coming, means data is matching. If something is coming, means data is mismatching. Okay, whatever test cases we discuss, all those test cases will give one or kind of defect. On top of that, also you are working, or maybe you learn in different different places, different articles. You can add all those also. Okay, any any other can add? Sandeep Rupes. So okay. So, okay, that is fine. A uh, lot of uh, defects gathered here. Next is from that another question is arising. Which type of defects frequently it is coming in your project? Suppose you work for six months in your project, then which kind of defect you are getting frequently? And what is the reason of that? What you captured? Why that is coming again and again? Data mismatch between the source and target market. So that uh, we frequently will get. Prakash, Prakash uh, can you explain uh, both questions answer one time? Yes, previous question already told. Huh? Many people told one one point. You can gather all. Yeah, yeah, you have already told all the people, but can you explain in, in your tone? Just one time. Sir, uh, out, like out of bound exception. Oh, out of bound exception, that also. Structure related uh, defects. Oh, yes, that also. Rupes already told now this forum why doing. I am always not correct. Many are referring many articles, many portal, many YouTube, Google, notes, all that. So, a lot of varieties of research are coming. You can gather all these and note down. So, okay. that okay. if I will tell, maybe I will tell my points. Oh. That will be not okay. 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 Hey, hey, sorry. Uh, Devesh, what did you say? Uh, we didn't get it. Can you repeat one more time? What was your question? Uh, actually, uh, my question is if uh, all the uh, all the uh, candidates can be tell uh, one one point but i asking to prakash can you explain in one means uh, his answer for uh, related to that questions in both uh, what was the uh, retail related defects and the uh, next uh, he asked in that questions which major effects uh, affected in six months means in your project that's why i'm asking I'm I'm sorry, Devesh. I'm hard to follow. What was your question? One more time. Can you be little clear? My my, my yeah. My question is uh, there is a question. Explain retail related defects you identified. Uh, so all the participants can be explained one one point. But I want a uh, all clear answer in one single uh, presentation. Or uh, after that, uh, he asking Did which is the most frequently defects are affected in your project that's also that question and see devesh you need to understand you need to understand we are talking about the defects are you clear what is a defect if not clear you take it separately you get to know okay okay Prem. guys those who are not okay bobby please please keep please what you Please keep on mute. And why am I not hearing with all people getting involved here? I see only few people are talking. Rest all still just, you know, watching it. 
it will really help you guys this is for you i don't hear om talking i don't hear ibrahim talking chiranjeev talking sandeep shruti if you don't know try to make an attempt guys these are very very simple questions we are getting in right attempt it please so devesh coming coming to you right defect we will take take a separate session okay i'll i'll make sure that you know you on you go guys who who does not you know or who don't know on q activity what they do and all uh, we'll make sure one one session we will cover that which will clear all those basic doubts so for now uh, you you park that question we'll come back okay bobby sorry guys interacting in between but just i wanted to make sure everybody you know get involved here so that will help you guys okay so next uh, what kind of defects you are getting frequently in last 6 month or last quarter or in your current release or every time you are getting and why what is the reason Uh, sir i have i am getting uh, some like compliance errors some uh, uh, different file formats are there in different uh, languages like some udf8 compliance errors i i am getting so that is because some of the uh, characters uh, in the given uh, files are not identified by the systems so uh, we took an help of a translators and then uh, we uh, designed the system from a developer side and then we process the data that was one of the major defects what i was experiencing in last 6 months okay that is major defect or frequently coming defect so it has happened for some different uh, markets like uh, for for some chinese japanese market and for uh, some uh, philippines some eastern markets it is happening sir uh, from last 6 months in our project okay Okay, so that is uh, also good one. Any other can tell which defect you are getting frequently in India? Prakash, count and duplicates. Okay, so count and duplicate frequently you are getting. This is very common thing. Why you are getting frequently? Any reason behind that? Like in source, for example, hundred um, rows are there. You know, when we transmitted, uh, transmitted to data warehouse. it will go 90 something look some transformation will uh, will remove the duplicates and uh, there we will get the like the counts variation no that is fine but why it is coming repeatedly this is very common thing count should match duplicate should not count these are very means uh, yes. basic thing why in your project frequently it is coming because of transformation yeah business logics validation and sometimes uh, for some of the columns in the target we have uh, we have uh, uh, we need to implement with the business logic so like the interest calculation should be like for some of the columns it should be the uh, 0.2 with uh, some uh, with other columns as well uh, if that is incorrect uh, so we used to get uh, the defects for the transformation logic Okay. Yes. Valid point. Next, who can tell? If you are getting that defect frequently, then why you can tell? If you are telling one answer, you should be ready with that question. Sir, in my project, like uh, frequently, I am getting like uh, configuration issues. Sir, um, we, we do see like uh, uh, I mean like workflow failures. We uh, like uh, anything. Sir. Uh, workflow failures we are uh, seeing for every project. Sir, for every project, uh, we will raise at least one um, configuration defect. And uh, we see like uh, mostly uh, we see like defects are uh, we are raising in um, data quality rules also, sir. these okay. are the two different these are the two areas uh, we raise uh, very very frequent 
Okay, yes, this is also a good point. So that you can note down because many people are telling, facing different different issues they are mentioning. These are only good points. If you will expect from me, maybe four, five points, three points, I will tell you will not get other points. Uh, Pradesh, uh, uh, I think you are the ideal person to answer this question because we are not uh, working professionals. So we don't come across any uh, like frequently uh, 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 appeared uh, uh, defects in ATM process. So if you can uh, explain few defects which are come across in ATM projects, various ATM projects, so that we can work on yes that is only count also frequently it can come then duplicate also frequently it can come why it is coming frequently maybe developer people missing that primary key why they are missing this it is not mentioned in the document so our requirement is not clear so whenever we are getting the requirement from pa they are not uh, the technical persons so that uh, they are giving the requirement but the technical thing something is missing and developer people are not highly highlighting that and which is not mis not mentioned they are not uh, added that also that's why it is getting frequently but we re means uh, rectify that issue also now it is adding that you can tell now configuration related so configuration team is separate so configuration team directly we cannot interact their configuration management at that time only they are involving in that so whenever we are going for the testing some uh, testing related activity configuration it can uh, come so at that time only we are getting that so configuration team maybe they are not doing uh, properly or they have some lack of communication between that that configuration is not happening then another is null null check also frequently it will come many people are raising that null check if null is one field as a column in one target table and uh, it is mentioned that that is a mandatory field so whenever you are getting mandatory field in the requirement, but you are seeing null, simply people are using that defect. That is not a defect. And that type of things also frequently it will come. So why it is coming frequently? Because in source that data is not available. One customer ID is present, one account number is present. That is not mentioned in the source. How we can expect in the target? That will not come. So in, in that case, how to do that? How to test that? already it is discussed also in the test case session we have to update that field value in the source side and after that again we can rerun the workflow or we can pass that to target so that that value should be populated in the target then that is not a defect so this type of thing frequently we are getting but that is not a defect we have to identify if that is also coming as a null then that is a defect so in the middle some business logic also creating problem developer people will not read that so if in the source side we are updating again that is coming uh, as null in the target side but our column in the target is mandatory column then we can raise that difference so this is also coming frequently you can tell then uh, name column name also some lengthy names are there developer people look what they are doing they are making some short name that is not mentioned in the document but they are making, uh, giving the short name for their means uh, time consuming process they are reducing that so in that case also uh, it is one defect as a tester we should raise that defect that also frequently it is happening exactly they are not giving the name that is the developer issue like that four five you can tell about yeah. Okay, when staging area in ETL process, you request. Uh, staging yes. area is required to apply the transformation logic, whatever uh, whatever mentioned in the business uh, business uh, requirements document and as well as in mapping document. Basically, okay. the staging area is a business logic where we validate the data by applying the transformations and joint conditions and validate it as per okay. the requirement. Yes, this is the correct approach. After, after we are extracting the validated, I mean the wanted data from the given uh, data from the client. So on the data will be working. I mean the data will be then moved to staging area. There we can use our business logics. Okay, next. 
staging staging area is where we can do the transformation logic validation like pass through columns derived and hard through columns validation between source and target okay we'll extract the data from like multiple data sources uh, and we'll store it in the staging area and then we'll apply like the transformations and all of those validations are that part we'll do in this area. Okay. Yeah, staging area is the yeah, um, middle layer uh, between uh, landing and uh, uh, downstream layer. For example, if we are generating the file, so um, first we, we first we load the data into uh, LND and uh, from there to staging, chasing, we are validating uh, the transformation logics and from there to uh, downstream layers. Uh, it will go sir. it's a middle layer okay so in this staging area data cleansing yeah. already done or after that need to do no data cleansing will be done in staging area only Prakash. here we have the collection of metadata and where we can apply our business logics and also we can hold to the uh, hold to the data for calculation mm -hmm. and it's a common area where we can perform, uh, transform the data to a uh, data warehouse okay so whenever the data moving from landing area to staging area at that time only data cleansing will be done so once it is reached to the staging area staging server all those are corrected data only or business data only which are useful data now need to use the business logic with transformations or some other implementations or join whatever it may be so that it will go to the next level so before landing uh, sorry after landing and before operational data store this staging area is present main focus of the staging is business implementation or business logic or if any tool is using then it will be used here only in the staging area okay next what is landing area or landing zone from a landing area from a landing area yeah landing uh, no, uh, we we put the data raw data we are pulling from um, uh, source to uh, landing area so for example uh, if, if we require two years of data uh, two years of raw data uh, uh, we will pull from the uh, source whether it okay. can be uh, like cloud or some how do something raw data we are pulling sir basically okay so if you are from Hadoop for anything you can tell that what otherwise is that question also it is how you are doing it in Hadoop. Uh, sir, landing area is a zone or server or area where raw data uh, is pulled. It can be in the form of file or database, and it okay. contains headers and trailers. One example is header and trailer. You can tell not always header and trailer. Okay. Okay. Any other? In landing area, the data which uh, is present, uh, which come from different sources, uh, like we have uh, different applications and different interfaces, like Simcarpis application, Principia is the interface, um, and also uh, uh, that uh, will come from the different sources and will be present in the landing area to do the ETL validations. Okay, this is also good answer. Next, you can tell. By using control and mark, you know the kind of thing we get the data from uh, upstream systems to landing zone where we can have these all raw data in one place from different heterogeneous systems. Okay, this is also a good point. If the data is valid, then it goes to the next level, like staging area. If the data is invalid, then it will be archived. Yes, that also you can tell. So at the end, this landing area is raw data. It contains. So whenever we are getting the data from some upstream system using tool or some other way, it will reach to some place. That place is landing area. It is landing. After that, we have to validate some common information. We should not be incorrected in inappropriate junk should not be present unnecessary columns should not be there invalid format should not be there 
So all those basic validations will be performed here in this lending area. Then it will be moved to the staging area with the correct approach, correct data, so business related information only it will move. Okay, so on top of the different different points you are telling, maybe referring different articles, different notes. So those are also good points you can note down. Okay, what are the responsibilities of ETL tester? Okay, this is very very important. Sir, the responsibility of ETL tester is to validate the data source and extract the data and extract how means we need to validate how the data will be extracted and we need to transfer it to the data targets target data okay this is one responsibility no other okay okay fine one you can. other can try any one or two other can try. Uh, as a ETL tester, mm -hmm. we used to design the test cases uh, uh, based on the mapping document, and then uh, we should script according to the business logics, uh, and then we used to execute the uh, execute the test cases. We have to extract the data from different sources like file, or database. And then okay. transform according it into business logic, and and then we can load into the data warehouse. Yes. Okay. So these are different responsibility. Around ten need to tell people already gathered. Any other can tell? Ten. Uh, analysis the uh, first analysis the requirement, <clears throat> and uh, uh, from there we we have to check whether. Uh, data is accordingly prepared in in the correct format or not and then only we will go for the transformation and while transformation <clears throat> if any other extra column like uh, or any other extra row uh, it is not uh, to be present while loading into the uh, target uh, uh, target uh, uh, warehouse and uh, we need to make sure that uh, from the uh, source to target uh, that will be a replica um, of of the source only okay this is also a good point you can note down any other can add so can we add here like uh, in the manual testing we are saying quality assurance all those things can we add here so uh, you can add but uh, correlate with etl and add. Okay. UA concepts will come everywhere. You can go for automation or ETL or big data testing, cloud testing, mainframe testing. Anywhere those concepts are same only. So relate those concepts and tell them. Otherwise, that answer will be purely manual testing answer. Profile will be ETL testing. You will tell in the manual testing answer, then it will not look good. So relate that. Their application you have to tell. Here data you have to tell. Sir, can we say Gosh. that after after raising the defects, uh, make sure that um, it's continuously taking follow up with development team and make sure that we get uh, the fix on time. Yes, that for is also testing. one important responsibility. For retesting to the, deliver. They are raising the defect, but they are not following to developer. That is big problem. You have raised means you have to follow up and you have to close. Yeah, so that we can get it on time and deliveries will not be hampered. Yes, this point note down. Good point. Next, who can tell? Akash, can we tell? Uh, then here, like, uh, may, we should make sure that data loads at expected time to improve the performance of the uh, data, like any operations. Yes, that also data depends. loads at the expected time like we can add this point now yes performance also always need to capture if it is not mentioned in our document to capture the timing or what are the timelines since then we are uh, capturing the time because it is expected that suppose one crores records are going to load we can expect uh, half an hour if half an hour it is not loading, two hour, three hour it is taking, that is a common thing, it is taking more time. We can raise that as a problem. 
everything will be not mentioned in the document some gk some uh, means uh, thinking capability also need to improve and test all those involve in all those activities okay that is one good point you can add note down any other can add right the test scenario you should be able to know what kind of uh, trans uh, yes sir can you tell again Yes, sir, we should be able to know what kind of transformation should be used while we are working on that tool. Yes, so it is not like that uh, uh, you will start your work. You need to understand in what type of business logic and transformation should be used for that requirement. That should be mentioned clearly in the document. If not mentioned, you can ask them. That is also one responsibility. We cannot assume that we can go for filter or we can go for router. It should be clearly mentioned within them. Otherwise, some hints should be given so that we can analyze it. We can add that. Okay, good point. Next. Uh, Prakash, I wanted to make sure one thing. Yeah, I wanted to make sure one thing. Like uh, I have just involved in uh, designing and execution of test cases. I uh, have not involved in uh, uh, not involved in the ETL uh, complete ETL life cycle. So is it fine if I tell like uh, designing of uh, test cases in ALM and developing ETL scripts and execution execution part, raising difficulty yes. much and have involved? Is it fine? Yes, that, that, those are common only. That uh, obviously it will be there. Test case writing. Then uh, defect finding, then uh, review the test cases, test uh, data preparation, query writing. These are very common. Okay, but I have uh, 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 but I have not involved in uh, this complete detail process. Is it fine? I mean, I, I do I need to include those also after no, data loading? I need to check. No, don't tell. Uh, I have not inferred completely end to end through a PTL. You are. Uh, Giving intervenes, you have to tell I involve in end to end. Not in run, in run, that's a different thing. Really, if you are working, then yes, that cannot happen. But you have to make sure everything you involve. That will be good. Okay. Actually, really, I'm working in the project that I have not involved in complete end to end, -end process. Yes. My yes, part sir. is much only. Yes, yes, that happens. The project one one module one one part one one component one layer only they can give a small project or small company and to end also they can give. that depend upon project to project but better to tell in interview I involve in all end to end activity. Okay, okay, Prakash, thank you. Okay, next anybody can add? No. Uh, sir, yesterday actually while I was working on the project, I mean uh, one of the transformation, actually I got an error at the end uh, while executing it. So we are not sure what kind of error is that. How should we know uh, what is that actually? So is it the uh, is it the place? I mean, while I'm working, uh, yeah. did I do anything wrong else, uh, or else is it an error? Yeah, on the process, if you are uh, following properly step by step everything, you are confident, but it is not working, then that is defect only. That's the that property okay. you are using, steps you are following correctly, three correct query you are using, functionality, everything is fine. If you are confident, then that is a defect. Okay, my doubt is, I mean, while I'm working that, I am not sure if that mistake is from my side or else from the data. Like that. Mr. Data is correct or not, you don't know. Yeah, data is correct actually, but I do not know. I mean, how to check that? Is it from my side? I mean, the process what I'm doing, if I am picking up the correct options or not, or is uh, it is a problem of the data? So which one is correct or which one is wrong? I I couldn't judge that. No, if you are generating the data or getting the data, suppose somebody is giving the data, then you don't know that is correct or not correct. So how how to validate some process will be there? You can check that. Otherwise, in some project parties, I think some tools or some queries need to write, and we can generate the data. We can prepare our data. So in that case, we can confident that this data is correct only. But out of all those data, also maybe uh, what type of uh, suppose you you are getting some customer ID. So customer ID you generated using query. Ten customer ID you got. In that customer ten customer ID. Uh, suppose the information present is those customer ID should be in COVID period 2020 and 21. But you got it is not mentioned in any column 
uh, that is 2018 or uh, 2017 or anything. So again, you can cross check in some other table. Maybe that is related with some common color. Join that and check. Maybe that can be one issue. It is uh, date range is not correct. Or you are looking for US application, but you got the data from UK. You have not filtered in your query, where country equal to UK. Maybe that can be one reason. So what type of data you are getting just cross validate what application you are using for which country, which module, then uh, what is the logic behind that, which tables are using, all those things together, just cross verify. If all are correct, then you are correct only. You can go for the debate. Okay, so good. Okay. Uh, Next. Prakash, I wanted to make sure one thing, uh, just a final one. Um, okay. Uh, I used to work on functional as well. I mean, uh, based on the flexibility, uh, if we have work on ETL side, then we used to validate ETL. And otherwise, we used to validate to the functional side. Uh, can we say like that if we have validated uh, based on the uh, work based on the flexibility, like functional yes. and ETL? Yes, yes, that also you can do. It is not like that you are your profile is in ETL testing, means all of your experience would be in ETL, not like that. In the uh, in your current work also, maybe 30% will be ETL, 20% will be manual, then 40% uh, uh, will be application side, then a uh, few things will be performance side. It can be mixed combined only. So apart from our ETL activity also, these are my roles which we are engaged in our project. You can tell that. Okay. Uh, I have a doubt here. Uh, Okay. Yeah, uh, we get to know that uh, while testing, we get to know that we have a uh, we have a bug. So can we share that uh, bug details to the peers who are working along with us in the project, uh, or directly report to the developer? You got a bug, so you can inform directly to the developer, or you can inform to your test team. You are asking. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so if you are 100% confident, no need to ask anybody, directly you can send. If you are confused or not clear, then better to check once, because if it is going to developers and it, it will be reject, then that, is be, that will be the negative symptom. Mm. You are not working properly. You are not having the proper knowledge. Maybe technical, you are poor. Or maybe application project understanding you don't have. That it will indicate. One, two is fine. But repeatedly you are doing that, then you will be pointed out in the team. So confident then pass to developer, not confident then within team first you can discuss. So if you work for three months, four months, then automatically confident will come. Same will be repeat, repeat, repeat for a whole year. First three, four months, if you are joining in any new project or new company, better to check with the peers. But every time checking with the peers also not good symptom. So initially fine. Later on independently you can try. Always managers, leads are observing the candidates. Independently he is working able to work or not. That is the first focus of them. Or always he is taking help. Okay, next. Uh, explain few major test cases with respect to ETL test cases, which you are using. So a lot of test cases we used around 40 to 50. So recall all those and everybody can try to tell at least three, four, five. Row count validation, duplicate check validation. Okay. Data criticality validation like in, in our project. Okay, three. Uh, transformation logics validation like the, we have pass through columns derived and uh, hard code columns validations like type two validations. Uh, Okay, four, five. Okay, fine, good. Next, who can take this? Null check validations, uh, duplicate data validations, and uh, source and target data structure validations. Okay, three. Any other you can tell, otherwise, other you can pick and tell few more points. 
data completeness and queries need to check data load logic here we can check data types also date and data format okay okay good next who can tell so we apply the minus uh, between the source table and the target table if we get any data then there is a defect if we go don't get uh, any da data then it is correct thing so yes good okay any other can tell sai shankar ibrahim mm -hmm. mapping documents check whether the mapping documents are present or not Mm, that is not test cases. Uh, just uh, means people are missing that information. That's why I mentioned to remember. And I already told that also. In that. Document you will not delete. Document they will give. Mm -hmm. Data quality rules, sir. Yes, data quality rules. Data cleansing. Target data types also should be seen. Yes, that is also. The data load logic, like, uh, whether it is an initial load or a delta load. Yes, that is one scenario or test case. Okay, so this way you can just uh, try to remember at least 10 points. And if anybody is asking, sequentially one by one you can tell at least 10. Because a lot of test cases are there. Not able to tell five points also, it will not look good. Already provided these test cases. Out of those only, you can tell 10 points around. And continuously tell. Don't pause in midi. Because pause, thinking, telling, it will indicate you have not worked. If pausing also, two seconds, three seconds, fine. Don't pause more time. Okay, next, what is business intelligence and why BI report is required? Business intelligence is like it's mainly focused on data visualization and the business in, uh, in BI reports are required just uh, to take the decisions. Like if example, if we take the sales of a particular product, why there is a decrease in the sales so that they can analyze the report and take the measures. Okay, yeah, very good. Very, very simple question. This is who can tell in any different way or who referred in different article or anything or any additional point? Uh, represented in the graphical way where we can analyze and uh, see the changes easily. Okay, who can analyze this? You are involving in analyze or any other persons are analyzing? Business, business can analyze. Management. Business can analyze. Data, analy analytic, data analysts, people can analyze the business reports. Yes. Our end user can analyze that. Report. End user also you can mention. Business persons you can mention. Management people you can mention. Stakeholders you can tell. Anything. Users also you can tell. Customers also you can tell. Okay, now what are the common BI report box defects? If you tested or you involved in BI report testing, then what type of uh, box you are getting? Like in ETL, in report part, what type of box you are getting? Very simple. Manual testing, application testing. UI, UI issues usually will get. Yes, so in BI report, two parts we are doing. One is UI part, and another UI. is in UI, UI 3.5 points. In data part, you can tell 3.5 points. What type of box you are getting in UI? In UI, like if there is any mismatch, like logo is missing, and uh, the date and the time. A date for the col color, time colors, what they have mentioned. Uh, Yes, colors, bold, related italic, to Related font. to color, related to icons, uh, or related to graph, how it should display, like bar chart or uh, like. Yes, pie chart, bar chart, histogram, do not, trend line. Do not, uh, do not uh, over can we say that like cosmetic data. data not completely uh, visible, overlapping data. Yes, overlapping also sometimes happen.
next uh, color of hyperlinks and uh, elements like button text box and task box yes yes that also you can add anything ui related this is manual testing only anything links broken link size of landing size, size font position Dis disable the field if any yeah, disable enable uh, with the buttons the date format date uh, table the date uh, formats okay date the, whether format. to drop down or Okay, so spelling, spelling, spelling. along with that, uh, highlight few terminologies also because you are uh, you are from BI tester or ETL tester. So everything these will tell and no terminology. Then it looks like purely manual. So those bar chart, pie chart you can mention. Then trend line we already discussed. That is one thing. Then date picker, date slider, which will slide and change the date. Then if you are changing the date duration. Using slider, it will reflect in the picker, dead picker. If you are changing something in dead picker, it will reflect in the dead slider, vice versa. Then cascade add all the filter options. Suppose once uh, country is selected, USA, in another filter box, it is state. So corresponding states will come. That is called as cascade add. Then horizontal, vertical, how the alignments are happening. Then zoom, 100% zoom. Need to test. In 100% zoom, it is not coming correct, but 90% zoom, it is showing correct. So these are different types of box getting UI. Next, data related, what type of box you are getting? Defect. Count mismatch, the number of rows not matching the source in the target. Um, now yes you can tell that in different ways you can reframe that because source target concept will not come what report is coming from top five uh, entities are not matching with the bi report what we are expecting yes that you can add so for particular selected date range the data what is coming uh, is incorrect yes that can happen the or uh, bar chart or uh, trade lines uh, displaying uh, the data incorrectly based on yes. the date selected so using query you can generate one data that should be matching that bar chart histogram and all those that is not matching uh, data calculation mismatch yes calculation also we are getting some calculation logic in one excel sheet or any document based on that calculating the data but uh, uh, that is uh, coming incorrectly that can be also one reason uh, professor wanted to make sure one thing uh, like i told you the data criticality as a part of data criticality validation uh, when the data is incorrect, the, the report has to change it, right? So in that report, we will validate it. In the report itself, we, we will look into that, whether that that has the, um, that column has triggered or not. So that we check. So can I include mm -hmm. as a part of uh, this report validation? Yes, that also you can do. ETL, after complete ETL, only reports are coming. So you can tell the ETL that is done. Now the same thing we are checking this report also. Okay, okay, so here also you can gather 10 around points and tell frequently. Explain about metadata with different types. Okay, who can explain about metadata? What is metadata? Why sir, I, I can explain, sir. Types? The data that are used to represent other data is known as metadata. It is simply defined as data about data. For example, an index of a book we can serve as a metadata for the content in a book. The metadata are three types. Business, met business metadata, 
and operational metadata and technical metadata like business data means uh, it means data ownership information in this business in definitions and changing policies and uh, for under operational metadata means uh, the current it includes current uh, currency of data and data linkage in technical metadata means it includes database system names table and column names and sizes data types and allowed values in technical um, technical metadata includes structural information such as primary key and foreign key and attributes includes okay. anyway. any other concern or any additional points you know you can add in op in operational metadata we can have uh, information like the new features added uh, in the application and how to use the public uh, how to use the new feature those all the information uh, captured in uh, operational metadata okay yes that is also good point uh, this is metadata is road map to the data warehouse Yes, roadmap to data warehouse. But also, you can tell another difference. And uh, sorry, let me listen. And, and in operational data, we operational uh, metadata, we can have the history of data migrated and the transformations that we are plan on it. Yes. And we also know that if the data is active or if it is deleted, or uh, so information of data is there. Okay. Sir, in the technical metadata, technical metadata mostly includes uh, structural information. Structural information may be, uh, uh, it include a primary key, include a, a foreign key and, uh, uh, and uh, basically structural information, sir, it, it will be uh, how the structure is uh, um, means defined. Okay. Okay, so that is about metadata. This is data about data, lot of definition, different way, different approach you got. Different types, basically three types, technical metadata, operational metadata, business metadata. Business metadata will give the business information, objective of the requirement project. Technical metadata, all the technical information, like uh, different way you already informed it. Can be structure related, it can be type related, data, what kind it is. So all the technical stuff it will be defined. It can come with one document or it can come with separate document also. Nowadays in most of the projects they are referring one document also. What is ETL mapping sheet? Why it is required? Are you using any mapping sheet in your project? What you can tell? Yeah, Prakash, yes, we have uh, the mapping sheet. The mapping sheet is the requirement document uh, to the uh, ETL process. And like to, to, to write the scripts, to design the scripts, we need a, we need the mapping sheet. Uh, by using those, we can write the test cases in ALM as well. We can design the test, ETL test script. OK. If mapping document is not available, then how you can do the testing? Yeah, this thing already told me in that ETL test cases. If anything is missing, then how you will handle it? We should ask the mapping do document. We should Sir, ask we the mapping. Okay. Yeah. After asking also, they are telling that we are not providing the mapping sheet, some alternate approach you can follow. What you will do?
based on the requirement document we can do the testing so general testing whatever we perform in for the etl we will do we will do that if the mapping document is not present or not given okay so in that requirement document also properly it is not covered mapping related what is the source table what is the target table few are mentioned few are not mentioned then how you will handle uh, we can create exact uh, replica of source table uh, means we can create target table same as uh, source table with all column names and everything and we will map one to one Okay. But if we don't have ATL mapping, so we can't uh, uh, we can't explain any uh, transformation logics uh, applied on this uh, source and target tables because all the information related to transformation logic and source and target tables which are uh, captured in ATL mapping sheet only, so that we can't uh, really assume what kind of transformation we can apply on this. So we can't do testing. Sir, uh, yeah. mapping yeah. document is not a mandatory, sir. Uh, as per my knowledge, mapping document is not a mandatory for every project. Uh, basically, for for example, if we worked on ABC project in the last release, okay, uh, in the last release, uh, it may require. Basically, if it is a new project kind of uh, new project, we may require that. For example, if there are, if there are any P PCR changes uh, uh, happened in this uh, next release, for that release, mapping document not required, sir. Whatever the uh, uh, change uh, it is happening in this current release, so that thing only we, uh, we do test. Uh, in that time, mapping document is not required, sir. Based on the project only, uh, mapping document will vary, like uh, whether it is required or not. Yes, very good. So always it is not mandatory. If small small enhancement are coming, then maybe they will not provide also. If any new requirement, big requirements are coming, that is expected. Again, it is not giving. And as a tester, we cannot assume anything. Already told that in the test case session. If anything is missing, you can communicate with the team members, BA, developers, managers. Make a meeting, discuss all those points, and note down all those points. Reply in that meeting invite mail, and ask that all these points noted we discussed. So can we refer this mapping? Not only for mapping, anything is there. Uh, can we refer this, and we can go ahead for our test case related uh, execution or preparing and all those things. So if any higher management side manager or client stakeholder or BA is telling that okay, you can proceed, these are enough for you. Then you can proceed with referring all those documents because something should be present on top of you. That can be a mail, that can be a document, that can be anything. Nothing is present and you are assuming then that is not a good idea. If they have not provided, you have to make it the scenario. At least uh, try one situation and take it in a mail. That will be your document. By referring that you are proceeding means nobody can tell you why you missed this or why you not did this. You are following the proper process only. So without documentation, don't proceed anything. If not giving, also make it in different way as a mail or something. You can make it or form a meeting, note down the points, immediately send out the mail. Okay, what are the challenges you have faced in ETL testing within your career? So till now you have seven year, three year, eight year, 10 year experience. What are the major challenges you have faced in your ETL testing? Where you face a lot of difficulty, complexity. Nehal, can you tell this? You have yeah, in, incomplete, incomplete requirement. Uh, it becomes very yes. difficult to work when requirement, requirements are not complete. Then unrealistic deadlines. Yes, very good. Then uh, getting uh, some ad hoc uh, requirements yes. in between the releases, uh, which which makes us uh, difficult to accommodate uh, already the tasks which are assigned that uh, it, it makes us really uh, difficult to accommodate uh, uh, those ad hoc requirement coming in. Okay. 
so in this suddenly, case coming, suddenly right? suddenly right. suddenly uh, during the release or one or two days before the release we are getting something from yes. business and we need to accommodate those things so uh, we handle this by uh, contacting to product manager or product owner and asking them to deprioritize something from already planned uh, items to yes. accommodate this okay very good points other can note down ad hoc if you were not understanding then that is one terminology need to use in testing ad hoc means randomly frequently or suddenly it will come that is called as ad hoc so uh, and also getting something for which we have not already uh, given the walk through uh, some functionality some requirement for which we have not got walk through or if, maybe we have got walk through but late uh, during the cycle the cycle of release yes that also can happen if they are engaged or busy with some other activity and it is extended but your work already started and that will be one challenge Okay. In okay, query writing also you can tell some challenge, but in database we will cover that. What type of data are available in your ETL testing? Which category of data you are using? The challenge. Uh... Uh, sorry, Prakash. Uh, the categories of uh, data, I'm not answering for that. I'm just answering for the, this challenge uh, which I have faced. Um, so the the one thing is the timelines. The timelines are very less uh, to execute all the test cases. that I have faced one of the challenge. Okay. Yeah, that already they all cover timeline. So the really good question, type question. Okay, what type of data are available in your ETL testing? Which category of data you are using? Uh, mainly we have uh, uh, data in three types, which are structured, semi-structured, and uh, uh, non-structured. Okay. So we are getting mostly we are getting uh, structured data in the database format, and sometimes we are getting uh, data in the form of uh, flat files, which are semi-structured. Okay. Flat file can be also structured for data. Some columns and some rows will be there. Column wise, if you are taking separately, some meaning will be there. Row wise, if you are taking some meaning will be there. Then in that case, we can tell that as a structure also. But some files, flat files, are semi structure like uh, JSON file we are getting, then that is semi structure. And uh, a row file, different different files are there. They, they will give in the QG. Those are semi structure. So semi-structured data, we are not involved, you can tell. Semi-structured, if you involve, then out of question will come. I mean, maybe you are using some out components. So purely structured data, we are using some as flat files, some as database related. OK, next is uh, this question. Is uh, sorry, Prakash, I didn't catch you. What type of data are available? So how, how can we say the answer to this question? I mean, what type? How can we make sure of type? No, types basically three types. One is uh, structured data, second is semi structured data, and third is unstructured data. So, structured okay. data means row columns should be there, and uh, individually we'll get the meaning also, row wise as well as column wise. Mm -hmm. Semi structure means meaning only row wise will get the meaning, not column wise. JSON file, row file, 
HTML, XML, those kind of file are coming means that is semi-structured data. On okay. structure means video, audio, image, all those things. So in part of our ETL testing in our company project, we are involved in the structured data. Semi-structure, okay. unstructured, you can tell other teams are involved in that. If okay. you are telling okay. semi-structure also we are using, then how do question will arise? Okay, next uh, it is repeated like that. What kind of BI report testing you are doing? Okay, that also cover. Last is what is data pipeline? Okay, Ravi, can you tell what is data pipeline? You are having more experience. Yes, sir. Pipeline in the sense, can we expect in the future, sir? No, not future. It is routing. Different different pipes are there. Data pipeline. Data pipeline is a flow. Can we consider it as a flow, flow of data. data? Yes, flow of data is called as data pipeline. So any kind of scenario you can think and give one example. Sales or product or banking or any kind of example you can provide. Uh, can we consider like this, uh, Prakash, like we'll be taking the data or like we'll ask the user to fill the details and we'll be saving that in the database and then using it, um, using each category of data for different purposes. Mm, that you can tell, but it will be not appropriate. Pipeline means uh, multiple pipes will be there, multiple flows will be there. You see one pipe which you are telling. At least three, four pipes will be there. In that way, you can call. Uh, sir, can here we tell a uh, CI CD pipeline? Mm, okay, CI CD also you can tell. Also, uh, is this is that related to uh, this ETL also? It's applicable for ETL. It can be. You can tell that no issue, but pure. ETL, it will not come. CI, CD means it will go into little bit different meaning. Okay. We can develop up infrastructure. Okay. The ETL life cycle we discussed in one session. That only you can tell, and this is one of our uh, layer. So there, it is routing using one database, that is one pipe. Second, another layer it is moving, that is one pipe. So four five pipes are coming. Pipes means connectors. Connectors means combining. So wherever three, four, five connectors are coming, that is called as a pipe. So 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 sir, so does it mean like um, uh, data is coming to landing, landing to staging, staging to some CR of history and uh, from there to CR of so these layers we can uh, consider as data pipelines. Oh, so that also can as data pipeline. All those layers you can mention as a pipe. Okay. Okay. So again, you can add that whenever the data moving from staging to ODS, uh, it is taking all the data, and from that ODS we are getting into different data marks. So country wise. It is going into different different data mart. Then, whenever we are getting the information, uh, suppose uh, insurance uh, project you are showing, uh, different insurance third party, those type of data are re routing to one data mart. Any name you can tell, any data mart name. In our project, we are using this name. Then, uh, another patient related information, it will route to another data mart. So, just three or five you can show. In data mark two, three pipes you can tell. So ODS two, three pipes you can tell. In ODS also you can mention all the profitable data which are calculated, it is coming to one ODS layer, and on the non-profitable, it is coming to another ODS layer. So here one pipe we are doing. So each and each and every layer which we are telling, single, single it is flowing, which we discussed earlier. 
Now in those layer, you can add also one or more pipe. Then it will be called as a pipe. Understood, sir. Thank you. Okay, so these are objective types. Next is already time is there. Okay, we can do one thing. This difference has already provided one document. From that only around five, six questions we will get. You can go through. Maybe next session we'll do. Now we'll jump quickly for a few minutes. A uh, few puzzle or uh, logical thinking related. All companies are not asking, but uh, few companies are asking that also. If you are looking for higher package, applying those company, JP Morgan, Yahoo, Google, then Amazon, they are asking. Four to five puzzle question also they are asking. Maybe in separate round, otherwise in any of the round also they are asking. Compulsory. Earlier, 15, 20 years back, puzzle round was separate, but nowadays that is not happening. It is good for you. Still, then, if you are looking for very great company with very higher package, that is expected. Okay, one small one, very basic. First, you can see. I mentioned one name, Money Kanda. Okay, so he is getting salary. 50,000. First day it is credited salary. Every month or the September month, he paid the house rent 20,000. So 50,000 salary he got. In his account, zero was there. 50,000 he got. 20,000 he transferred for house rent to owner. Then 10th September, some monthly family maintenance purpose, he transferred 15,000 to some grocery shop or some supermarket. So everything they provided whole month uh, will be maintained in that. Then 14 September entertainment purpose, 9,000. Uh, means uh, traveling somewhere or going for movie or uh, some other type of entertainment he engaged. So 9,000 expense happened. Then some utility bill coming on 25 around, he paid all those things, 6,000. Electricity bill, water bill and all those things. So all those together, if we calculate, 50,000 was there, 20 plus 15, 35, and 9, 44 plus 6, 50. Now he is zero value. Now, initially, nothing expense got the salary, so nothing is mentioned here in this balance column. Next, 20,000 he expended. Out of 50,000, 20,000 expense happened. So in his bank account, 30,000 balance is there. Again, 15,000 expense happened, 15,000 balance is there after doing minus. Again, 9,000, he did some expense, 6,000 balance is there. Again, 6,000, he paid for utility bill, zero. Now we can add this color. Balance 30,000, next 15,000, 6,000, all total 51,000 it is coming. His total earning is 50,000, but if we are adding this, then why 51,000 it is coming? Can you identify where is the problem? Um, because this is semi additive. No, don't, not... don't come to ETL. This is not related to ETL. Forget about ETL now. Come to normal thing. Generally. Maybe already in a bank, bank he, uh, he has a thousand rupees. To that thousand, the 50,000 has been credited. Okay, any other? Mm -hmm. Monika, your name is mentioned, expected from you. <laughs> Very simple. Our testers' thinking capability should be increased. That also observing in many companies, if you are going for higher package, that is compulsory required. For developer thinking capability, it can be ignored or less time. One thousand balance also it was not there. That is mentioned. Nothing was there. After doing some expense only, the balance came 30,000. 
again 15,000, again 6. So everything done zero. But if you are adding all these, then 1,000 extra quiet is done. Sir, we don't need to check with the banks. Sir, yes. we don't need to check with the banks. We, we need to only check with account transactions only. Okay. But in a balance column in your bank account, if you will open, one balance column will be there. That balance is of uh, something like uh, only uh, 0 0.00 or something. Uh, sir, that column uh, the total uh, cannot be the balance. Balance is what is left uh, in our account at the end of the day or end of the month. Okay. So that cannot be the addition of those. So when we say balance, uh, after spending all the amount, I it should be uh, like zero. What is left in the account? So that okay. is the balance. Okay, so this is uh, uh, now uh, we can route into different things. Suppose this is not a balance, 50,000 should be there. Means if you will include all those expenses, then it should be 50,000. Now, if you are calculating this balance scam after doing some expense, this scam after doing some expense, this scam, if we are doing all those, then one figure we are getting. So, 51,000 should be present in starting in Money Counter's account. But uh, in starting, so 50,000 it was present, not 51,000. Maybe he has got somewhere some interest uh, from bank for his account. Sometimes uh, they, uh, in the recent times, uh, the bank was uh, the bank was creating the interest amounts uh, monthly basis also. No, if something is there, then it will be mentioned in the operation. All they are mentioned in that uh, description and comment section. That is not mentioned. It's interest not here. Okay, total amount if you are calculating. Is it a correct approach? In this approach, if you are calculating the total thing. That's not correct. We cannot add that in the balance column. Okay, total amount if you are considering by adding this column, not good approach, not correct approach. Total balance using this column you are calculating also not correct. If expense what you have done, that you are adding, then that is the correct. This is one expense, one expense, one expense. 20 plus 50 plus 9 plus 6, 50. This is 50, 50 000. 000. This is the spent money, sir. That one, 30,000 is remaining. No, 30 is remaining. So remaining amount you are adding and telling that this is mm -hmm. my whole balance or this is my total amount earned in this month. Then that is not the correct approach. We have to add spent money. Spent money you can add all those spent money if you are adding, then you will come up with some figure that is your total earned income. Okay, so a lot of questions are there we cannot cover, which are frequently asking in some company only trying to tell. Okay, this is one cake, proud cake. Eight persons are available. You need to distribute those eight persons equally, purely same, no difference. Equally need to distribute, and you have to cut this by knife in three shots. One, two, three. First, we need to and cut one. horizontal, vertical, and then from the middle, we need to cut it again half. Okay, how? First, the Vertical, it makes the cake into two pieces. Again, horizontal, it is made into two again. Okay. Now we need to cut <laughs> from the middle. Middle, the. Height, height middle, middle of the cake. Yeah, yeah, it okay. makes four, eight. Okay, very good. This is also frequently in many interview you can see. OK, 
Okay, this is one very good question. Uh, take one person named Rupesh or somebody. He is traveling by bullet, going to one place 200 km around. In middle, faced one jungle. Jungle started. So he observed that uh, if he will enter into that jungle, no petrol pump, nothing is there. And it is already empty. No petrol in his bike. Now he found one person, he is selling. Maybe another person name you can tell. So in this jar, 100 liters are there. Means a lot of petrol which is present in this jar. And that person, or uh, Rupe Sarmani, and any person name you can tell, you have two jars to sell. One is three liter jar, another is five liter jar. But this person is asking, Rupe is asking, I need four liters. I don't need I don't need five. I need exact four liter. I have 400 rupees. One liter price is 100. I can give that so I will stop this one. Okay. Can you a lot of noise is coming, sir? Sir, exact two liters uh, petrol uh, is required by that bike person, right? Exactly four liters. Is uh, I will answer and that first. That, just hold on. Uh, four liters exactly he required that bike person, and that four liters should be given in one shot, not in two shots. So if you are selling, then you can give this petrol here in this bike in one shot. Four liters will enter, not in two shot. You can use any jar fine, but you have to give in one shot four liter. Who know already? Keep hold. Give chance to others. Can I answer this? Uh, Magana, you know this? Um, I can try. Like first filling the five liter jar, and then uh, that that will be poured into the three liter. So two liters will be left in the big jar, like five liters, man. Okay. This, uh, so two liters. The same process we can, that can be filled in the another jar, and the same process we can start. Uh, we can do again. So we'll get the four liters in a hundred liter one, and we can transfer that to our bike. But two liter, two times you have to give now. One shot only you have to give. So can I answer this? Uh, if you know, then wait for a few minutes. Others can try. Many, many, many interview this question they are asking. The puzzle is there. Shruti, try Sunil. Uh, first, we need to take fill three liters, pour it into five liters. Again, fill three liters. And in five liters, two liters is left over. So we can transform only two liters into five liters. So one liter will be left out in three. Okay. From the five liters, it's now full. The five liters is full now. We need to throw that five liters. And the whatever okay. which is left over in three liters is one liter. So that we need to transfer it to five liters. OK. Again, we need to fill the three liters and pour it into five liters. Now it is four. At one shot, we can transfer it. Yes, very good. So from three liters, you are giving to five liters. So two liters yes. is empty. Now yeah. that five liter jar, you can make it empty now. Again, you can take that two, uh, five liter jar, which is present with two liter and fill here. So out of three liter, two liter will come, this one. 
so one liter is empty now make it empty again now pull this five liter again take it here in this three liter jar one liter is empty two liters is full already so if you will uh, give here then one liter only it will go because one liter capacity is there now this five minus one here five is full one you have given here that is four that four you can give here in one shot sir is there any other answer to this mm, another, another, another approach you can try i know this answer uh, sir uh, sir first we will fill 5 liters then pour it into 3 liters jar so 2 liter left with a um, uh, bigger okay. jar 5 liter then empty 3 okay. liter empty 3 liter jar then add mm -hmm. uh, pour that 2 liter which is left in bigger 5 liter jar into 3 liter jar but before pouring uh, take one stick and dip it inside 5 liter jar and mark mark that stick till till no, what point it is stick is not available here stick is stick not available stick paper stick paper nothing is available you have one big jar one small jar one medium jar 5 liter 3 liter 100 liter nothing is available it okay Okay, sir. For measurement, anything is there, then that is easy. Mm, yeah. Okay. Another one. Any mini Sony, three sides are there. Sony is very clever out of all those. Tini and Mini contributed 10, 10 rupees, total 20 rupees. 20 rupees given to Sony, and they told that take one ice cream for us. Sony went outside to purchase one ice cream, and 20 rupees ice cream she was searching, but got that ice cream price is 15 rupees. So she paid 15 rupees and came back. Now what she thought is. i will not tell 15 rupees to these two persons these two uh, kids tini and mini i will take profit two rupees profit i will take fidelity she kept that uh, she kept that two rupees so she will tell that that ice cream price is 17 rupees to this tini and mini now they ask that rest amount you can return so 1 rupees 50 paisa She returned to Tini one rupees fifty pesa. She returned to me. Okay. Now how? Uh, what? What is the amount they spent? Ten spent by Tini and returned back one rupees fifty pesa. So she spent eight rupees fifty pesa. Mini also spent ten rupees spent one rupees fifty pesa return. So she also spent at the end eight rupees fifty pesa. So total they spent seventeen rupees. now we can calculate to come up with the correct figure 20 so the total spent is 17 rupees by tini and mini and hidenly sony kept 2 rupees so 17 plus 2 19 where is 1 rupees it should be 20 Uh, but she got ice cream for fifteen rupees, na? Uh, yes. Two ice creams for fifteen rupees, so seven seven rupees fifty pesa each. No, but she returned also. No? She told seventeen rupees is the price of ice cream. So you take your one rupees fifty pesa. Return that. Yeah, like she got it for fifteen rupees, but she to uh, she uh, kept two rupees with her. So it is now seventeen. The remaining is three rupees. She divided the three rupees into two parts. Oh, uh, fifty for fifty paisa, fifty paisa from Timmy and Mini is the profit for Sony. That is a one rupee that's hidden here. 
okay but uh, they expend 8 rupees 50 pesa each so total they spent 17 rupees for the biscuit 2 rupees taken by sunu 19 only if we calculate all together expense and uh, which is hidden or stolen it should be 20 17 plus 2 which is with Sony, that is 19. Uh, Sony has spent his one rupee less, like uh, let's say they have paid 8.5 and this person has pay, paid some 6.5. The total will be again same. No, how 6.5? Return already now. 1.5, 1.5, they already got from their amount. So both spent 850, 850 only. Now they are telling that uh, we expend for 17 rupees, Tini and Mini. And we got to know from that ice cream parlor that Sony, you have taken our two rupees. You can give that two rupees also. So 17 rupees they expend. Again, they will get back to the 19 only it is coming. Where is another one rupees? Uh, So then it will be uh, 7.5, 7.5 and 5 rupees from Zomi. But they don't know now. This good price is, uh, ice cream price is 15 rupees. They don't know. Only Sony know. Okay, you can think this. This is very, very excellent question. It will take some time for you. Think some cool time and try. Come up with the answer. Next we can move. Immediately telling the answer, you will not answer. You can try it from yourself. Okay, who are good in arithmetic? We we'll ask to that person. Soumya? Yes, sir. Okay. So others can just uh, uh, observe only. Don't disturb anything in middle. Okay, Soumya, you can start. Think one value, one numeric value. Okay, so it will sir. be easy for you that only you can think maybe within 1 to okay. 10 or within 20 or 30. So that small calculation will come. Big value you will think, then big calculation will come. And don't tell to me, okay. don't tell to anybody. Okay, sir. You can think only in your mind. Okay, sir. One small number you can think in between 1 to 20 or something. Done? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now multiply that number with 4. Okay, sir. Done? Yes, sir. Okay, so what result you got, add that result with 4. Do this. Yes, one. sir. Again, divide that with 4. Yes, sir. Okay, subtract with 2. Yes, sir. Multiply with 7. Yes, sir. Add with 9. Add with? 9. Multiply with 7 and add with 9, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, sir. Is it 30? No, sir. You did mistake somewhere. <laughs> Multiplying with? Okay, can I try? Okay, who are good in arithmetic, you can do, otherwise you will disrupt. Yes, yes, tell me. Okay, think, think one number. Yes. Small number you can think, otherwise you will disrupt. Yeah. Yes, yes, I get it. Multiply with 4. Yes. Okay, after multiplying 4, you can add with 4. Yes. Mm. After that, yes. 
It's not audible. Some noise is coming. Okay, all can mute who are not available. Uh, we at divide by four. Okay, next will come otherwise. Maybe you are confusing here. Okay, this one we can do first. One value you can think who is doing there is? Yeah, yes, I'm thinking. Okay. Small value only you can take. Multiply that with yes. Three. yes. Add with two. Yes. Then again multiply with five. Yes. Add with five. Yes. Multiply with ten. Yes. Add with ten. Yes. Tell the result. For four fifty. Ah, you are doing wrong. No, I'm getting uh, check. I'm getting two number, two value, two numeric value. Then multiply by two, it's four. Plus six, uh, plus add two, six. Six into five, into 30. five, thirty. Thirty plus five, thirty-five. Sixty, sir. Thirty-five. Thirty-five okay. into, into ten, 10. Uh, three fifty. Three fifty. Three sixty. Result. Three sixty. Sorry, three sixty. Three sixty. Yeah, I thought. How I you did mistake? Tell Yeah, actually I am multiply by. Uh, sorry, I did a hundred in that three fifty. But I don't know uh, what you thought. How you are doing? I don't know anything. But I captured you are mistake. Yes, yes, right. Tell Last you. problem also. The number is four, sir. Okay. Okay, this one tell how how to find out this. If somewhere it is missed, then easily within one second telling you are missed it. How to tell? Confusion is uh, very add or multiply in that uh, calculation. There is a mistake. But parallelly, I am not doing now what you thought. I don't know two or five or ten. If I do parallelly yes. with you, then I can tell that uh, you did mistake. I don't know what you thought. Yeah, right. Right, right. The number you are thinking is which you are multiplying that number only two, sir. That you may know. How I know multiply with two, adding two, fine, but I don't know what he thought. He not pinged also. Hmm. Uh, sir, uh, can you uh, also do it with the two? Because it is 360. Then okay. the last ninth, yeah. Okay, how how to check? Like this two number two, then multiply with two four, then adding two is six, and multiplying again with five is thirty. With 30. Thirty. And add that value with five is thirty five. Again multiply mm -hmm. that value with ten yeah. is fifty. Then add 10 is 360. Okay, but if you thought two or three, then only it is coming 360. Okay, you can think one number then. Now again, we can try. Think one number. Quickly multiply with two. Okay. Add it two. Okay. 
multiply with 5 okay add with 5 okay now multiply with 10 I am yes. not sure yes. what yes. 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 Yes, so how I come to know Okay. If mystic you are doing also telling. If correctly you are doing also what you used telling. Uh, sir, the first number, uh, for, for first result it was 360. So, but now it is not 360. No, no, no now it is 460. Number. No, no, I was talking about first. No, okay, now it is 460. So, hmm. just first number 4, right? 4 and you are doing minus uh, 1. Must be there is some logic. 4 minus 1, so 3. Initial number was also the, for the first attempt, it was 360. So you identified 2 means 3 minus 1, 2. You are doing. Okay. What so if I take, uh, I take another number, uh, 5. So based on answer only, we can analyze more. I guess the logic is like uh, multiplying the number with the specific numbers, like multiplying the value with 5 and adding the value 5. The logic is behind that only, what I guess is. Yes, obviously. That only thing. So any number is multiplied with two will give you will give even number then adding two further. So then again multiplying with five means it will um, come the number like uh, ending with zeros. Okay. I either ending with 0 or 5. So if it is ending with 0 and adding 5, uh, will you the number ending with 5? Then? Okay, I'm giving the hint. You can try. Uh, now I have to catch up another meeting. We can exit now. If anything you are not getting from means top to bottom, then you can try in reverse way, bottom to up also. That is very simple approach. Not only arithmetic, anywhere you stopped, left to right, you can try from right to left, top to bottom, you stopped somewhere, you can try from reverse way. If you are driving and going into somewhere in a jungle somewhere, you stopped due to some reason, what you will do? You have to come reverse way, right? So always you stop somewhere means you have to follow the reverse way. That is the GK. Okay, use that tree, try it next. Next session we'll discuss that. Now already it is 11, 10, I have to join one meeting. It will, like, it will be like 360 by 10, then we have to divide it by with 5, then we have to divide it by 2. To the yes, reverse way you can try with 2, 3 example you can do. Obviously you will get just yeah. 5 for 10 minutes you can go. Yes, sir. Just 5 to 10 minutes it will take. Okay, closing now. Uh, have to join another meeting. Okay.